So leading up to the break, I'm going to try and run through um, what the open group is doing. And if I finish early, that's a great thing because I'm going to run through it fairly quickly because you're going to get it to read and it, a lot of it is readable stuff. So uh, this is um, basically the forum highlights and what the forum roadmaps and where they're going. But to start with, just a couple of things about where the open group is at the moment. We now have 488 organizations have signed memberships with us over 40 different countries that are listed there. Um, and we continue to get a new country every now and again, every quarter. Thank you, Dawn. Safe travels. Um, and that's thousands of, th th I pressed the wrong one again, didn't I? There. I'll get this right in a minute. Um, in 2014, these were just the, the, where the new membership agreements came from. So it's, it's fairly well spread. That's, that's just in 2014. 93 new membership agreements signed. Hopefully you can recognize your country on one of those lists. And they came in various forums. So you've got the, Architect, the Archimate Forum, gain new members, the Architecture Forum did. IT for IT was brand new in 2014, so obviously that was. The Open Trusted Technology Forum, OTTF. Uh, the Security Forum, the Open Group Security Forum, gain new members. And Open Platform 3.0, the convergence platform. And then uh, the health the healthcare um, forum, the vertical there, gained new members, as did the other vertical, which is the exploration, mining, metals, and minerals. Um, the Open Group Phase Consortium gained a lot of new members, and we also had a number of gold memberships that took on a lot of those. And of course, um, Cap Gemini returned as a platinum member. So I'm going to run through the forums uh, fairly quickly. There's uh, a lot of information here, so I don't want to put you to sleep. Uh, the Archimate Forum, uh, obviously the two key things there are the Archimate specification, but also um, I want to draw your attention to the tool, the Archie tool, um, which is a free open source um, tool that we are now uh, sponsoring. And it is also, you know, the case that we've got the um, tools interoperability uh, work going on that I'll get into, and, and Archie does that. So that the idea is that if you start with the free tool, you can then move up to a, a commercial tool later. So here's the roadmap. Um, they're working on Archimate 3. Um, so in the first quarter of this year, this quarter, what they're working on is reviewing it, developing it, reviewing it, developing it. Harmonization, uh, constant work to bring TOGAF and Archimate closer together. Uh, work on that. Capability-based planning um, is there. And uh, the model exchange file format, that's the interoperability part. So that, that work is, is critical, and they're hoping to finish that up this quarter. Uh, also, there's a white paper on enterprise risk and security modeling and analysis, and that fits in well with the security forum work on risk analysis, the risk framework, and all of the FAIR certification, and relating Archimate and BPMN working together. Uh, there's a number of publications, uh, the model exchange file format, again, um, there's a snapshot of that, so that's worth taking a look at already. Um, the risk and, risk and manageability, all of those things you can take a look at and uh, go to the publication site when they're there. Um, the Architecture Forum. Now, the Architecture Forum has been struggling with um, what we're going to do to evolve TOGAF to a, to a next version. And it's an ongoing discussion whenever we have a standard, we try to improve it and develop it and so on. Um, so far, TOGAF 9 has got more than 40,000 certifications against it. 
there were 75,000 downloads of Togaf in 2014, over 166 different countries, and the book sales were about 11,000. So one of the critical things in evolving Togaf is making sure that we can move everyone along together. We've got to make sure that we preserve everyone's investment in architecture, so there's not going to be a revolution, it has to be an evolution. And that we are in so many countries means that there's a huge translation activity around the standard, around the examinations, around certification. We have to bring all that together. So, you know, this, is going to, this isn't something that's going to happen quickly, but it's something that's an ongoing discussion. Constantly looking at that, uh, we don't know, uh, we don't have a publication date for it. But uh, we recently surveyed uh, more than 40,000 architects um, on, and it's a pretty decent survey. Has anyone seen it? Anyone here seen the survey? It went to AEA members. Yeah, there's a few hands. Um, if you want to see more about that, we've had 500, more than 500 responses, and the results are going to be discussed this week in the Architecture <coughs> Forum. Yeah. So that'll be interesting. So there's a, a lot of things going on in the Architecture Forum around the, um, the evolution, of whatever that, that is, or the next version release, uh, and some of the parts. That, you know, the, the idea is break it down into parts, perhaps, um, and then evolve the parts. Uh, there's a part two uh, set of activities there. Can you read this? Yeah. Okay, there's a thumbs up from the back. Got that. Capability improvement. A lot of things around capabilities. So tomorrow I'm going to talk about, um, from an, an open group CEO perspective, what I think about business architecture. In actual fact, the, the, it's called what I don't need from business architecture. And maybe what I do, but there's a lot of things that people are talking about business architecture, and in fact, a lot of it is going on here or already exists. So there's a number of publications. Framework and Archimate Modeling Language, white paper, so that would be something that you've also seen on the other one. Um, ecosystem. Ecosystem is very important to TOGAF, so work on how that uh, extends. Uh, it should be important to all of the standards. But in TOGAF, it's been a, a, uh, a key part of why it's been so successful. And then Norwegian glossary and a Danish glossary. We've got glossaries all over the place. DirectNet. Not many people will know about DirectNet. I did mention it briefly talking to Dawn just now. So this is around um, mesh communications networks. So it's a task force. Um, it enables effective and affordable solutions through a collaborative government industry environment. And um, I'll let you read the rest. But as I said earlier, you know, their standard has got the capability of linking airplanes that already fly around the world as nodes in, a, in an internet in the sky. Uh, in this waveform mesh network. It's got a lot of interest from the government here um, and a lot of participations, but it's, it's one of those things that goes on quietly in the open group. Here's some of the things that they're working on. So developing... They've already got some standards out there in the waveform and the link layer. They've, they've taken them on forwards. If you're interested in that kind of stuff, it's worth a look around their site. The Enterprise Management Forum um, has been very quiet lately, but they're working on manageability and manageability infrastructure um, that we can use. And it's not only specification standards, but also open source technologies. One thing that they um, worked on some years ago and still is very, very popular is uh, Open Pegasus. Open Pegasus um, 
came around because we, we tried for years to have specifications that enabled um, interoperability between management systems. And we never got there because no one could agree on it. And another consortia, the DMTF, developed a specification, but it required an implementation in order to do it. And they were not able to do it under their charter, so we partnered with them and we hosted the Open Pegasus thing. And now interoperability using Open Pegasus is enabled. And uh, that's been amazingly successful. So manageability is their big thing. The things that they're working on right now are there. The uh, common manageability programming interface and the OS management interface technical standard. The vertical um, exploration mining metals and minerals, which is the first organization that within the open group did a very detailed reference architecture. If you want to look at what reference architectures look like and, and how detailed they are and for an industry-wide um, architecture, it's certainly worth looking at their site. It may not be relevant to your industry, but it gives a lot of pointers of what that is and how that is. And we, we're quite interested in doing that for other industries as well. So here we've got mining organizations. Um, you know, part of this was coming out of South Africa. Uh, the mining organizations there, Anglo Platinum, were involved, Data Mine, uh, Rio Tinto is a member. And um, one of the, the challenges, of course, is that without standards, their health and safety records were, were not that good. So they, you know, one of these things is it reduces the uh, risk and operational cost uh, in the mines. One of the things that we had to do, though, was you, you're not just selling to uh, the concept of these standards. It's not just going to the people that are developing the architectures or the IT guys. You've got to sell it to the mine manager. And the mine manager is only worried about two things, as far as I can gather. How much he's got out of the ground that day and how many people have died. Right? Hopefully none. Unless they go on strike when you shoot them. Right? Um, and so we had to sell this, this, this idea to the mine managers and they got it, which is great. So this is what they're working on. Um, they're working on, obviously, they have a very, very uh, good um, reference, frame, reference architecture already. So the information model they're working on, the applications map, uh, updating the charter. And uh, they've got some publications coming out in the second and third quarters. The Open Group Phase Consortium. Um, this is all about federal avia aviation. Uh, so anything that flies, whether it's manned, unmanned, it's got wings, hasn't got wings, got engines, doesn't have engines, anything that's got the dials in, the avionics in. Uh, the problem there was that the government was enforcing something called sequestration, which is cutting everyone's budgets, because they got fed up of asking people to cut their budgets, so they just said, we're taking 15% off everything. So as a result of that, government departments, and in this case it was led by NAVAIR, were looking at how they could actually save money. And with the avionics in aircraft, they're all hardwired together. They're all stuck together. So it's very expensive to maintain, update, and integrate these things. Wouldn't it be great if we could have almost a plug and play, almost like a, a smartphone, and have portability between these things? and we could actually save some money. So they got together with um, all of the vendors. There's, there's about 86 member organizations of the phase consortium now. And they've developed uh, a portability standard for this. And uh, hopefully at some stage, we'll have a certification program as well. So they're looking at how they can develop those kind of things. Interesting stuff. Uh, and then these are the things that they're working on. The, now, the, the face uh, specifications, there's, there's two levels of them, really. 
what we publish and what I'm allowed to see are the things that are um, uh, publicly available and able to be discussed globally. Um, the members themselves have got much more detail um, that, and things that are covered by export control as well. So more of that. Um, the conformance launch is on hold uh, right now, um, largely due to concerns about liability and so on in the vendor organizations. And more processes, the technical environment, and procurement. Again, that's on hold. Because really what we want to procure against is certified product. Until we've got certified product, there's nothing to procure. Their uh, publications, um, they're quite prolific. So they're doing a lot in the first quarter and the second. The Healthcare Forum. <coughs> uh, now here we're looking at bringing boundaries information flow to the healthcare industry. What they've worked on recently is commenting on a paper um, by the Federal Health Authority um, around Federal Health Information Management, the FIM. And we've got a very good relationship with them now. Um, and we've, we've done the first round of submission to them that's been very, 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 very well accepted. So we're having an impact uh, in healthcare. And also we will look at um, reference architectures and standards and so on. Messaging. All of the things that the Open Group does and try and bring them together for the benefits of healthcare. Here's their roadmap. So there's the presentation to the FHA board and the FIM evaluation. And there you've got the uh, publications coming forward. So the evaluation briefing was published at the end of last year, and we've got more coming through this year. IT for IT, um, brand new last year. Uh, we've got a whole presentation on that. Uh, if you'd like to know more about it, you can uh, check with us. Um, we've also got some members from IT for IT sitting right here. Um, and I'm sure they would be delighted to fill you in more on, on that area. But really, this is, this is new to us. It, it's not new completely. They've been working on it for some time. It was inspired by uh, Carol Van Sealand at Shell, um, who said that we are, we for a long time have been running IT for the business, but we now need to manage the business of IT. So for the customers, the IT for IT forum provides a vendor neutral place. So organizations like Shell and BP and the many others that have joined already have a place where they can gain knowledge, lead the development of the reference architecture for IT management product portfolio. I've, I've shown one of the artifacts that they've got. There's a lot more that can be seen. And uh, they would welcome other IT organizations to join with them because I'm sure that many of you have got the same problem. You know, the thing is that they are vast you, you've all got large organizations with large amounts of IT assets. Whether you know all of the assets you have or not is a question. Whether you know the total cost of ownership of them is a question. Whether they're optimized to how they're operating is a question. How you can get best value from running the business of IT is a question. And this is something that this group is setting out to try and work on and solve. And they would welcome other organizations to join with them. The roadmap. Um, so in this quarter, we're looking at publishing white papers, 
a technical standard will start with development and uh, more guides and work white papers. Very interesting area for our, our people. Open Trusted Technology Forum. You heard me reference uh, with Dawn some of the work on OTTF and, in fact, the um, provider accreditation. So if you were head of a telco, um, head of supply chain in a telco, these are the sort of things that you would benefit from by mandating that any product supplied to you were accredited under the Open Trusted Technology Provider Standard. So you get risk reduction and you get innovation enablement. The risk reduction comes through brand degradation, customer information loss, loss of revenue, regulatory non-compliance. All of those things can be reduced. Innovation enablement, because you've freed up time to focus on innovation, because you've got this. You can different your product, differentiate your products, drive revenue and have geographic flexibility in what you're doing. Fair roadmap. So OTTPS uh, has gone through the ISO, or is going through the ISO process to be adopted by ISO as so many of other, other standards have, especially in the SOA area. And um, uh, I can see Heather over there, who's worked tirelessly on our behalf at ISO on SOA. And uh, those all got adopted. And recently, they've taken large parts of our cloud standards to include with the ISO standards. So now we're, we're looking at a past submission for the provider standard. And that will make it an international standard. So that will be kind of fun. Translation into simplified Chinese. The, the issue with, with China in this particular context is that um, I, I met with the, or, or I was taken to meet the folk that are here from the ISCCC, the IT Security Certification Conformance Council, which is a government agency in China. And we were talking through all of the standards and things that the Open Group does, and mostly focusing on architecture and so on. And I happened to mention OTTPS. And the question I was asked was, what impact would that have on the Chinese, on our, our Chinese market? And I misunderstood the question. <laughs> I said, um, well, um, it could help some of your companies like Huawei export to the US. Um, and they said, no, 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 you don't understand. You, you've explained to us that the problem is that in the US, for example, there are problems where you have product that is delivered that somewhere along a complex global supply chain malware or counterfeit products are introduced. I said, yeah. Well, we have the same problem. So now we want to know how we can use that standard to certify products coming into China. Additional publications, all there. Open Platform 3.0. This is what um, some organizations call the nexus. It's the convergence of social, social mobile cloud with data internet of things. Standards, best practices, and knowledge sharing. So it's bringing these things together. So is kind of in and kind of out. It's, it still retains its own work group. Uh, cloud still does it. So this is a forum comprising a number of work groups that can take their own work and then come back and bring it together. They have uh, published a snapshot of what the standards might look like and what their thinking is. And we would welcome anyone to take a read of that and provide feedback to them. You don't have to be a member of that group to provide feedback. It's anyone can provide feedback to a snapshot. And we'd welcome that because we want to know if their thinking is on track. Uh, we're looking at... Um, 
a further snapshot coming up in this quarter and a, a, a version of the um, standard perhaps in the third quarter. The top two here I, I mentioned to Dawn, these are the two standards that together can do for the Internet of Things what HTTP and HTML do for uh, Internet messaging. Um, pretty serious stuff. And then we've got this scenario uh, it's gonna, that came out in the fourth quarter. UDEF, um, we're hoping to relaunch UDEF in the third quarter. That's been reworked quite substantially. And then cloud computing governance, big data and internet of things life cycle. Dear old Unix, um, which continues to be ever present. I can see a number of uh, Unix certified products around the, organized around the desks here. Um, Charlie, you've got one. Um, Sally's got one. Uh, Lauren's got one. Anyone with an Apple laptop has got a Unix certified product that they're working on. So they're working on the base specification issue seven, a technical core agenda. And we've got some publications coming out there. Everyone talks about Linux, which a lot of people are using. Um, the problem I have with Linux is it's not as secure as Unix, it's a bigger footprint, and it's not stable. The standard itself isn't stable, it's not a standard, it keeps changing. And the products themselves are all different versions. With Unix, everyone conforms to the same specification, which is 5,000 odd APIs and protocols. You know what you're getting, you know that you can have portability. Real-time and embedded systems forum. This is largely focused on high assurance now. And what they're working on in, in all areas is areas around safety critical, mission critical. And the people working in that are getting a lot of information, education, sharing of knowledge around all of this area. And they've got a, quite a lot of high assurance things that they're working on. MILS, multiple independent levels of security. Uh, they're working on updating those APIs. They're working to develop standards for high assurance common criteria. Multi-core update. Common application environment for dependability. And uh, dependability through assuredness. Now, dependability through assuredness, I'm, I'm convinced, is a, is a way that you would architect in security and risk, mit risk mitigation from the outset. And um, it should be a, a real part of everyone's considerations when developing large, complex systems. The Security Forum. Um, this is a, a forum where vendors and customers can come together and we've just picked out um, CISOs, Chief Information Security Officers. For them, uh, there is a peer group opportunity, networking, focusing on risk management, security architect architecture, where they can steer the program, and demonstrate leadership. And it's a peer group on critical subject areas. The Open Group Security Forum, working on uh, TNSP, I think, stands for TOGAF Next Security Part or something. <laughs> and there's no such thing as TOGAF Next, by the way. Um, but um, it's, it's all related to integrating more security, getting tighter security into the uh, TOGAF guidance. And uh, at the bottom, we've got more security and risk and risk certification. And then um, carrying on risk certification. XDAS is uh, a very old standard for distributed audit services, I believe. Um, India, 
a lot of activity going on with the, um, uh, the organizations in India. And um, ISM-3, which is the, um, the way of identifying your vulnerabilities in your organization and having a framework for addressing those vulnerabilities, you know, that's, that's a two-part problem. Many organizations can understand the vulnerabilities, but actually having a framework that takes you all the way through to addressing them and, and eliminating them is, is the other part. Data security, principal security automation, open platform. And here's some of their publications. I think I've finished. <laughs> hey, that's a relief, wasn't it?